Community reporter Colin Grono is off to the medieval village of Mercer Here's actually what he found. I'm standing on a small village green, and around me are some of the most wonderful thatched cottages I've ever seen. And to my left of the trees, I can see an old stone church. I could be in a Dorset village of a Thomas Hardy novel, but actually I'm on the outskirts of Bridgend in Mid Glamorgan, in the picturesque village of Merthyr Mawr. And with me today is Anne Morris, a local lady with a keen interest in local history. Hello, Anne. Hello, Colin. Uh, what can you tell me about Merthyr Mawr? Well, I believe that the proper name for Merthyr Mawr is Merthyr Maimor, or Maivor, uh, named after a little-known Welsh saint. It dates back to early medieval times, I believe, and there was an ancient sub-manor and a place of early religious significance. So what does Merthyr Mawr offer, say, to a family on a day out? Well, apart from the village itself, there are a couple of interesting bridges and there are stepping stones to where you can cross the river, the River Iwenny, that is, and over to Ogle Castle. And children have great fun trying not to fall in. <laughs> there are sand dunes and uh, castle ruins. You can picnic down, and there's nothing like a bit of sand with your egg sandwiches. <laughs> That's right. Uh, right, well, can we, can we explore a little bit? We just have a little walk around, if you don't mind? Yes, yeah, fine. We just walked down now to a small lane to the left of the village green to what looks like a well it looks like a miniature version of the seven suspension bridge which crosses over the river Ogmore. How, how old is this bridge, Anne? Huh? Well the the first bridge on this spot was uh, erected by Sir John Nicholl in I believe eighteen forty three. And this first bridge was notorious for its pronounced sideways motion being commonly known as the swing bridge. It was replaced in the 60s by the present bridge, but still known locally as the, the Swinging Bridge. It's a, a lovely spot for the children at the riverbank here. Yes, in, in the summer you can see children playing on the riverbank river with their, their fishing nets. They have a great time. It's quite a surprising amount of people here today. We've now crossed the Swinger Bridge and now we're heading towards the Iwenny River and some strange stepping stones which lead to Oakwell Castle. The, these stones are listed as an ancient monument and I believe they date from very early medieval times. At one time there were 52 stones uh, visible but through silt and that, you know, much fewer can be seen today. Uh, one, one of the legends has it that they were, they were laid for a lovesick girl who lived in the castle. <laughs> Her lover lived across the river and their meetings were impeded by tides and floods. Apparently the stones served their purpose because the lovers married in, I think, 1233. No, in my luck, I'd have probably fallen in and drowned. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we, we're back now to the village green. We're going to take a short drive through the the lane to Candlestone Castle. We've arrived now at a very large car parking area among some trees in a beautiful setting of bluebells and flowers and it's right in front of me here is Candleston Castle. It's not really a castle, it's, it, it was a, a fortified manor house. Uh, the name Candleston is probably derived from the uh, De Cantaloupe family who built the manor house here in the late 14th century but uh, the building remained occupied uh, and, until the 19th century. I understand, and it was a village uh, stood here once. A Trigan Lord is called? Yes, in English, supposed to be called uh, the town of a, of a hundred hands. Why it was called this, I'm not sure, but uh, it was supposed to be situated near to the manor house. What happened uh, in the end to, to it and its inhabitants is, is just not known, but uh, there is the possibility that it was covered by the moving sands from, from the nearby dunes. So, so we could be standing in someone's house. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and in front of me I could see the largest sand dunes I've ever seen. I, I believe the present dunes are once part of the largest sand dune complex in Britain, which stretched all the way to the Mongols. That's right, Colin, yeah. And actually, some of these are the scenes from, from the film Lawrence of Arabia were filmed here. We'll move on now. I think we'll go and have a look at this other bridge, the Dipping the Bridge. The Dipping Bridge, Colin. Okay. Well now we've driven out of the picture postcard village of Merthyr to what the locals call the Dipping Bridge. So why, why do they call it the Dipping Bridge, huh? There's uh, holes in, in the parapets where farmers used to push their very reluctant sheep into the River Ogbo for, <laughs> for a seasonal dip. 
it was built in the 15th century. But no, it's uh, it's very popular with local children. The children actually mm -hmm. get pushed like the sheep to the horse. <laughs> <Yeah, no. laughs> I've also heard it's got a more sinister uh, side of its history. Oh gosh, yeah. Legend has it that uh, at the side of the bridge there was once an inn, and uh, the landlord would rob and murder the pilgrims en route to the shrine at St David's, and it is said that. Many, many years later, workmen discovered skeletons in the grounds of the inn. Oh, well, well, a gory finish to an otherwise great day in the picture postcard village of Merthyrmau. And thank you very much for taking the time and giving me such an interesting tour of one of the hidden gems of Wales. Oh, pleasure, guys. Wonderful spot, thatched cottages as well, not far from Ogmore, of course, as Merthyrmau, and not far indeed from Brid uh, Bridgend. So it was Colin.